trying to free your mind, Neo. I'm so sick and tired of the United States government's bullshit warmongering propaganda and their allies in the mainstream media that I've decided to put together a short factual video presentation on their long history of repeatedly lying to the public in order to win support for their illegal wars. I want to start with the first Gulf War in Iraq 27 years ago, since this is probably the best example of just how low the establishment are willing to sink in order to further their selfish agendas. Now as usual, the so-called elite were trying to convince the civilian population to go to war, but most people were unwilling. That however, literally changed overnight when the world heard the horrific testimony of a young Kuwaiti girl named Naira. I was the youngest volunteer. The other women were from 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, <laughs> took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. That was horrifying. <laughs> this truly shocking story of Iraqi soldiers ruthlessly killing innocent babies quickly spread around the globe. Pulled from incubators and scattered like firewood across the floor. And they had kids in incubators and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. Rip babies from their incubators in Kuwait. Even Amnesty International cited Naira's haunting testimony to back up the claim that more than 300 babies were mercilessly murdered at the hands of the Iraqi government. There was just one problem with the teenage girl's testimony. The whole thing was a fabricated lie. Then a rather embarrassed Amnesty retracted its report. In London, spokesman Sean Stiles said, as hard as they tried, they could not confirm it. We spoke to um, well over a dozen doctors of different nationalities uh, who had been in Kuwait at the time, and they couldn't stand the story up, and it became quite clear to us uh, that credible medical opinion was that this didn't happen. And it wasn't just Amnesty International. The story did not hold up under repeated scrutiny by reporters and human rights investigators, including Andrew Whitley, executive director of the human rights group Middle East Watch. You went to investigate? Yes, we did. You went to Saudi? Mm-hmm. And then after the liberation of Kuwait, you went to Kuwait? Correct. What did you find? We went straight to the hospitals. We were particularly concerned with going to the maternity hospital at the Al Saba complex. This is the largest hospital in the country. And it's a hospital that has perhaps a half to two thirds of all the incubators in the country. Did Iraqi soldiers remove babies from incubator rapes? No, they did not. Not at all. So what the hell really happened? And who was Naira? Well, it turns out that this not so innocent teenage girl was really a part of the Kuwaiti royal family and the daughter of the Kuwaiti foreign ambassador to the United States. And her Academy Award winning testimony that she gave was actually thanks to the coaching she had received from a massive public relations firm named Hill and Knowlton, a company with very close ties to the US government. Craig Fuller, who until last week was president of Hill and Knowlton, was George Bush's chief of staff when he was vice president. I was involved in President Bush's campaign. I've also been involved in President Reagan's campaign. And it, this was like a campaign in every sense of the word. He needed no introduction to the administration. My relationships there uh, kind of continue even having left the government. And I think almost spontaneously, uh, as the Kuwaitis were talking to us, we were also talking to the people in the administration to find out how we could be supportive with respect to the president's program. The program was to go to war. Now as unbelievably unethical and psychopathic as this all is, it's not an isolated incident guys. 
With the Vietnam War, which began over 60 years ago, the government made the claim that they had been attacked and used this as a justification to go to war. We now know today that once again, these were nothing but lies. Was there anything to shoot at out there? No, I don't. I'm certain that there was not anything to shoot at right from the beginning. And events afterwards showed that our judgment that we'd been attacked that day was wrong. It didn't happen. In the more recent Iraq war, we were told over and over and over again that the Iraqi government had weapons of mass destruction. The United States knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. And they were closely allied with Al-Qaeda. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. And again today, after all the destruction has already been caused and cannot be reversed, we know this was all bullshit lies. The time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't. Turns out he didn't. But it appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north somewhat. Oh. You said you knew where they were, near Tikrit, near Baghdad, and north, east, south, and west of there. Those are your words. My words, my words were... We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south. The claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists would have attacked us on 9-11 turned out to be false. I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. And what about the Libyan war just a few years ago? They claimed this was purely a humanitarian intervention. Humanitarian assistance. Humanitarian relief. Humanitarian assistance. Humanitarian and economic assistance. And that they were intervening to stop a massacre. We have intervened to stop a massacre. Well, today, Thanks to the exposition of Hillary Clinton's emails and an investigation conducted by the British government's House of Commons, we once again know that these were agenda-driven lies. Even more disturbing than this criminal deception is the fact that the US government and their allies openly supported terrorist fighters, most notably Abdul Hakim Al Asidi and Abdul Hakim Balhaj, members of an organization called the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, an organization that was internationally recognized before, during, and after the war by the United States, the United Kingdom, and the United Nations as an officially proscribed terrorist group. Yet, in spite of this incontestable fact, and even after Abdul Hakim al Asidi admitted openly to the mainstream media that his fighters had links to Al-Qaeda, they still supported them. There's a Al-Qaeda flag flying over the courthouse in Benghazi in Libya, put there by the same group that we helped to uh, oust the Gaddafi regime. What is going on in America? On one hand, we have soldiers dying in Afghanistan fighting Al-Qaeda. On the other hand, we just helped a group of people take over Libya, and the Al-Qaeda flag is flying over their capital city headquarters. What are we doing? It's time for America to get its story and its priorities straight about what we stand for as a nation. It comes as no surprise then that today, Libya, which once enjoyed the highest standard of living in all of Africa under Gaddafi, is now a failed state and the country has degraded into chaos. And now this same methodology is being used in Syria. 
authorized to provide humanitarian support. Humanitarian efforts. Delivery of humanitarian aid. We're providing humanitarian assistance. Providing humanitarian relief to the Syrian people. And thanks to declassified documents, not only do we know that they've been once again supporting terrorists, but they literally helped facilitate the rise of ISIS. The report is from 2012, and specifically, it explains the dangers of what the U.S. government is doing in Syria at the time. Remember, in 2012, ISIS, as we know them today, did not exist. Page three of those leaked pages state three facts about the situation in Syria. A, internally events are taking a clear sectarian direction. B, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and AQI, or Al-Qaeda in Iraq, are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. And C, the West, Gulf countries and Turkey, they support the opposition, while Russia, China, and Iran support the regime. Now stay with me. Because if you don't know the term Salafist, that movement is an ultra-conservative orthodox movement within Sunni Islam. The doctrine is summed up as taking a fundamentalist approach to Islam. Sound familiar? Salafist is the same belief system as Wahhabism, from which ISIS draws their radical, violent, merciless beliefs. So now let's go back to that document. Because after reading page 5 in section 8C, the Department of Defense warns this, quote, If the situation unravels, there is a possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared Salafist principality in eastern Syria. And this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime, which is considered a strategic depth of Shia expansion in Iraq and Iran. Yet in spite of this documented evidence, and even after these Western-backed terrorists beheaded a 12-year-old boy on camera, the government and mainstream media insist on calling them rebels. Obviously, the United States government denies providing any sort of uh, help to the, to the terrorist groups that you're talking about. They say they provide uh, help for the, for the rebel groups. Tell us more about... The reality about is, Jake, yeah. the reality is, and I'm glad you brought up that point, because this is an often talked about thing by people like Adam Kinzinger and others saying, well, we've got to support the moderate rebels. Uh, every place that I went, every person that I spoke to, I asked this question to them. And without hesitation, they said, there are no moderate rebels. Who are these moderate rebels that, that people keep speaking of? Regardless of the name of these groups, the strongest fighting force on the ground in Syria is al-Nusra or al-Qaeda and ISIS. That is a fact. There's a number of different other groups. All of them essentially are fighting alongside, with, or under the command of the strongest group on the ground that's trying to overthrow it. And what about the first chemical weapons attack in 2013? The Obama administration claimed they knew for a fact that the Assad regime did it. The facts cannot be denied. We know the Assad regime was responsible. But later on, we found out that this was another unsurprising lie. That the most radical jihadi, if you will, uh, 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 opposition group, rebel group, El Nursa, uh, we're talking about serious, serious uh, Salafis, Wahhabis, if what you will, uh, had access to sarin. There, were, there was a lot of intelligence reporting about it. The White House can say anything they want about it, but that is a fact, that they had access to sarin. So when, they, when the incident took place, the one thing they didn't do is they didn't consider uh, the possibility that al-Nusra could have been one of the people that involved. They went right away to the notion that it had to be Bashar, and the, the world's press went with them, including the American press, and in fact, they didn't have much of a case. So why should we trust this criminal government now? When you have a history of compulsive lying, of course you lose credibility in my book. Now I want to make this very clear. This is not about siding with the Russian government or the Syrian government or any other government, since this system of exploitation extends far beyond the illusion of governments or countries. This is about us, the people, from all over the world, siding with each other. It's about us waking up and finally realizing that if we want to live in a better world, we have to fight back. And by fight back, I mean educate yourself and then educate others. Because this, this is a war for the mind. And the revolution that we really need is a revolution of the mind. They fear those with knowledge, but they control those without it. 
So arm yourselves with truth, my brothers and sisters. And together, we can create a much better world for all.